do you believe that Jews <coughs> who definitionally do not accept Jesus as their savior or, or the Trinity or any Christian, specifically Christian doctrine, are saved? I believe the answer to that is yes, um, although I would have to explain, but in, I, I'll answer in a short form, yes. Okay. Uh, and in fact, by the way, my evidence for this is in the Bible because uh, uh, there is a, a, a scene in the Bible where Abraham, who clearly came before Jesus, didn't know Jesus, didn't accept Jesus, is described as being in heaven. So quite clearly, there has to be a mode of salvation uh, applicable to the Old Testament before Jesus that doesn't include Jesus. It's not fair, but I'll just, I'm just curious, given that your wife is an evangelical, would she agree with you on that? Uh, I, I think so, although this calls for further discussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, have one, so I have one other question, and that is, uh, you, would be, you will this evening, to the extent that time would allow, you would be making the argument for the God, specifically the God of Israel. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I would argue that Christianity takes if you will, the Jewish idea of God and in some senses universalizes it. I mean, the universal principle is in Judaism. It's not it's right. invented by Christianity, but in some senses... Okay, I just want to understand. Go right ahead now. Um, my turn, right? Okay, and uh, I have... Christopher, I'm going to start with you. Uh, let's begin with this business about religion poisoning everything. Now, I think you would concede that much of what we call Western civilization is built on the pillars of Athens and Jerusalem. If you look at Western art, Western literature, Western sculpture, Western painting. So my question is, isn't it irresponsible to say religion poisons everything? Did religion poison Bach and Dante and Milton and Shakespeare and uh, Raphael uh, and uh, Wren and the designers of the Gothic cathedrals? Can't you concede something good in religion? Well, I think the, the great cultural task is to rescue uh, things like, say, Chartres, um, or Verdi's Requiem, though Verdi was able to write perfectly good Requiem without being a believer in God. And we only know about most of the painters and architects and musicians that they had better have affirmed a belief in God at the time. It would have been a very painful death for them if they had not done so. We can't be sure of their sincerity. But just as I wrote a book about the Parthenon, for example, and think it should be regarded as a great temple of our civilization, and a great, uh, as 5th century Athens was a great flourishing of it, but I don't agree with the cult of Pallas Athena. I don't agree with uh, Athenian imperialism in Mytilene and Sparta. I don't agree with the Eleusinian mysteries and the, and the, the various dark uh, cults that disfigured uh, Okay, Greece. but... It's quite possible to have the one, the glory, the architecture, the culture, the symmetry, the poetry, and the music without the superstition. I, I, in fact, I would define the cultural task of agnosticism and atheism as being uh, the recognition of the numinous and the transcendent uh, while repudiating the superstitious and the supernatural. But if it was the case that a belief in Jupiter or Zeus or Diana inspired the Parthenon, it would actually be simply wrong and, in fact, historically narrow-minded to say that the Greek myths poisoned everything. Clearly, they had an enormously beneficial impact because they did inspire those people who built those buildings. So unless you're claiming... We can't, we can't know that. Well, two things. One, we can't know that the belief in these uh, cults was sincerely affirmed rather than coerced. Are but you that's maintaining the that? Thing, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, if you grant this, Dinesh, if you want me to grant it, then you too have to say, well, as you very perilously have just already come close to saying, that any religion is as good as any other. You can go to heaven. Who cares that Jesus said you can only come to the Father by me? It doesn't well, matter. You're, you're, you're shifting be, ground on me. No, 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 no. And, and you have to say that the Aztecs... You're implying you have to say preposterous. That the people, no, you're implying you preposterously. You have to say that the people who built the hideous uh, temples based on human sacrifice everywhere from Cambodia to Mexico, uh, have just as good a claim to be the founders of our civilization. I'm sure you don't mean to make such an idiotic uh, statement. Well, you implied a moment ago that all these great thinkers and artists must be closet atheists who did these things despite their religious beliefs no, and I not said, because no, of I them. I said that we may, that not, we, may not speak, wrong. we may not speak for them. We may not say that we know what they well, thought. Well, let them speak for themselves. We may say for sure that they, did not, they would not have dared to say differently. 
We know what happened to those ground. who did. Let me shift ground. Uh, one of the themes that you stressed in, 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 in your opening st uh, statement earlier, and we, we see it consistently among other of the so-called new atheists, is this equation between Islamic extremism on the one hand and Christianity on the other. Now, in dealing with the Islamic extremism, we could cite 9-11, the Bali bombing, the London bombing, the Madrid bombing, the list goes on. Who today would you say... Those beautiful, well, let me finish my question. It's my time. It's my time. Uh, who would you say today is the Christian bin Laden? Where's the Christian Al-Qaeda? Where's the Christian Hamas and Hezbollah? Where's the Christian country run today along the lines of Khomeini's Iran? Name them. But I don't have to. I've never made any sense. Will you that. admit then that this analogy is specious and that yeah, in no. fact there are fundamental differences between Christianity and Islam asking, that the new mean, atheists no. have been exploiting to in, in a sense transfer no. the guilt of Islamic no. radicalism onto Christianity? If you had asked me in the 1930s which religious belief I thought was the most threatening to the survival of human society and civilization, I would have said Roman Catholicism because of its very intimate and deep and nasty relationship with fascism. At that stage, the, the greatest threat to the hu humanity was not jihadism, but at present it is. Religions take their turn at bat. Um, in Northern Ireland, um, Protestantism has been far more oppressive okay. and, and obscurantist than Catholicism even for the last uh, half century. I would regard that as anomalous, but there's no way, just as you can't answer my question about why in that case don't you credit the builders of mosques and Aztec temples and, uh, uh, and Khmer uh, uh, temples too, and say that all of, all of these prove that religion is the origin of civilization. You won't do that because it would be too ecumenical for you. Dinesh, you have three minutes to introduce your pitch. For the I have three more minutes? Oh, I see. Um, I'm going to um, put one more question to Christopher and then switch to Dennis, if I may. Um, I'm, I'm going to come back and answer your points about Hitler and anti-Semitism, so I'm, I'm going to hold off on them now. You, you say in your book, um, God is not great, that you think that Jesus Christ did not even exist. Uh, you consider seriously the possibility that he was a fictional uh, character. And I'd like to ask you, by what standard of scholarship do you do this? For example, for Socrates, and I think that there's probably no uh, sane philosopher or historian of philosophy who doubts that Socrates existed. We have only two sources, really, for Socrates, both admiring disciples, Plato and Xenophon, and they give very different portraits of Socrates. So my question is, if Socrates existed by accepted canons of historical scholarship, uh, on what basis do you deny the historicity, forget the divinity, just the historicity of Christ? Well, you only had to turn another page then to see that I say that uh, there's no proof of the existence of Socrates either. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, Dinesh, you what only, about you, Alexander you the Great? You only, you only Did he have, exist? You only have to turn another page to see my say in my discussion of Athenian uh, philosophy that there's no proof of the existence of Socrates either. I, I, make, I make the point almost as you do. I say it's with, with the exception of two people who were admirers. We, don't, we can't be certain that he existed at all, but it doesn't make any difference. Christopher, because the Socratic, I can, I can revere the Socratic method without having any need at all to deify or, or uh, put on a pedestal, uh, 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 make superhuman. Uh, the person who invented it. No, the point I'm so making I'm is... I'm sorry, you've just dug a pit, not the first time this evening, you've just dug a pit for yourself with your own hands. I, I was just making the point that the historicity of virtually every figure in the ancient world, from Alexander the Great, relies on fragmentary evidence, and so canons of historical scholarship generally accept reliability, even when there's partial documentary evidence, if there are no reasons to believe well, the there's contrary. No, there's no evidence but... You're yes, elevating so. the degree of skepticism in dealing with Christ no. that you would nowhere no, apply there is no to evidence, any other figure. There is no evidence but the hearsay of fans. I want to switch to Dennis the Prager of and Jesus my... Of Nazareth. Alexander the Great at least has coins with his face on them. I'm going to put one quick question. And name. One question to Dennis Prager, if Written I may. Written down by literate people. There's nothing of that for Jesus or Moses. Christopher, sorry. you are engaging in... The filibuster. <laughs> All right. Um, no, answering the question, I think, otherwise you could have accused me of not doing so. There is no evidence of any kind for the existence of Moses or Jesus. None Save this for the rebuttal. at all of the kind that there is for Alexander the Great. Not to know the difference is well, let's not just to know say, the difference. Let's just say this puts you wide outside the mainstream of the entire living historical community. But let me turn to Dennis Prager. Um, I've, um, been to the, I've been to the grave sites of the, of the Macedonian royal house. You won't find Jesus' grave in a hurry. And they okay. can't find the, they can't, they haven't found Mount Sinai yet. Yeah, he's, he <laughs> <laughs> Go look for Mount Sinai, tell me when you found it.